There's a lot of advice about how to outline a story on the internet, and almost all of it that I found was useless. So I stopped trying to wade through it. Like it's just bad content marketing run amok or something. So today I'm going to give you the most useful ways I know to understand stories. The keys to the kingdom as I understand them. And trust me, not a single one of them is use mind mapping software. So let's say you want to understand a story, a book, a movie, a graphic novel, TV show, play, series of tweets, radio drama, I mean, it could be anything. How do you do it? Well, you read it, of course, but that's not enough because stories have kind of a magic of their own. They transport us to another place and when they're well constructed, we get swept along by them in a way that makes it difficult to analyze how they work while they're working on us. In fact, if you're watching a movie and you notice something like the beginning of the third act, chances are it's not a very good movie because when it's good, you're so engaged, you don't even think about that kind of stuff. So I think to really understand a story, you have to outline it. And that means reading it or watching it again and writing down the bare bones of what happens. There simply is no wrong way to do this. I mean, should you use a spreadsheet or a notepad or index cards? The answer is yes, whatever makes it easy for you. Because whatever tool you use, you will learn something. And that's the point. So everything I have to say from this point forward is just to make it more profitable for you to outline something. There are two reasons why you might want to do this. One, you want to write something of your own. Or two, you want to enjoy every story you encounter more. And for me, number two is by far the better reason. You're increasing the value of every story you're going to encounter for the rest of your life. I mean, that's what I call leverage. Stories can be tricky and the process can be confusing, especially if you've had one too many English classes recently. So I'm going to arm you with some of the conceptual tools I use to make things clear. Principle number one, any story is a system of systems. So think of the elements of a novel. Dialogue, character, symbolism, description, narration, plot, chaptering, paragraph, setting. It could go on and on and on. There are many, many ways to combine those elements to create a good novel. And no two authors do it in the same way, and no two authors should. So in your outline, only pay attention to the systems that are interesting to you. If you don't see any great symbols, don't go looking for them. It's not a box you have to check off for an assignment. What you want is to understand what's one level up from all of that, which is how these systems work together. Outlining a plot is as simple as writing down what happens in the beats of the story. Like for Star Wars, maybe part of it would be Luke wants to join the rebellion, the droids run off, Luke chases the droid, Luke is attacked by Sandman and rescued by Obi-Wan Kenobi. And from that list, you can begin to understand the story. If you get stuck on what's important in a scene or why it matters, you can always ask what happens if you don't have that scene in the story. There's a lot of other ways you can analyze a scene, and that's going to have to be a video of its own. But most of the time, if you just get the basic beats of the story down on paper, many new things about it will become clear to you, and that's what you want. So here are questions that you can start asking of the plot. What started the story rolling? How did the character get into this mess? What does the character want? What happens if the character doesn't get it? From this list of beats, you want to derive three things. External story, internal story, and theme. First, what's the external story? For Star Wars, the external story is blowing up the Death Star slash defeating the Empire. The second thing you want to understand is the internal story. What does the character need psychologically inside themselves to be whole? Luke has to learn to trust himself and his abilities to reach his full potential. Use the force, Luke. And the third thing is the theme. What's the value that every scene or almost every scene turns on that ties the whole thing together? The theme of Star Wars is loosely believing in something bigger than yourself. And Luke's story resolves powerfully on this theme when he uses the force to blow up the Death Star. 
but so too does Han Solo's story. You see, he doesn't believe in the Force or the Rebellion or anything other than himself. He bails out of the fight with the Death Star because he has a price on his head. He's looking out for number one. But he changes, and we see this in action when he comes back in the end to save Luke so that he can blow up the Death Star. So you might say the theme is only when we believe in something bigger than ourselves can evil be defeated. I think the most important thing you can know about any story is what genre it's in. People interested in literary fiction have looked down on genre fiction for some time, but that prejudice certainly doesn't stop literary fiction from being its own genre. And what a genre does is set the reader's expectations of how things should be in the story. It's a set of conventions that a writer must deal with. Genre conventions are conventions about the way the systems of story interlock. Some of these conventions include kinds of scenes, like every thriller needs a daring escape scene, and a hero at the mercy of the villain scene. But these conventions extend to everything, certain symbols or lines even. A Bond movie isn't a Bond movie without spy gadgets, and a cool car, and a scene with tuxedos and evening gowns, and the lines shaken, not stirred, and Bond, James Bond. Genre even extends to permissible themes. A romance novel cannot have a theme that denies that love is possible and still be a romance novel. Closely related to genre is the form a story takes. Stories only have a limited number of forms. You could say that there are five or seven or ten basic plots, and you can be right with all of them. It's kind of all in how you slice them. But I think if you say there are 50 basic plots, you're wrong. It may be an indefinable number of plots, but it's not infinite, it's finite, and it's small. So it's also very useful to try and fit the story you're outlining into one of these structures. Dostoevsky said there are only two plots. Person goes on a journey, or stranger comes to town. Christopher Booker worked on his book Seven Basic Plots for 34 years and came up with these. Actually, Christopher Booker worked on his book Seven Basic Plots for over 30 years. See, look at this thing. It's just a, it's a tome of a book. Look at this. His seven basic plots are Overcoming the Monster, Rag to Riches, The Quest, Voyage in Return, Comedy, Tragedy, and Rebirth. Blake Snyder, in his book Save the Cat, identified these ten basic plots for film. Monster in the House, Golden Fleece, Out of the Bottle, Dude with a Problem, Rites of Passage, Buddy Love, Why Done It, The Fool Triumphant, Institutionalized, and Superhero. So a cowboy movie is in a genre that includes many forms of story. Unforgiven is a voyage and return story. And you could also say it was a kind of buddy love story, I suppose. The Searchers is a quest or a golden fleece. Sci-fi is a genre that also includes a wide range of stories. Alien is an overcoming the monster or a monster in the house theme. It's not important that you use either of these schemes for story form. Just have a good sense of what other stories the story you want to understand is like. And if you say that it's unlike any other story, you have an understood story form. The last very easy thing to do when outlining a story is to make a list of major characters and look at how they stack up against each other. What's their function in their story, their perspective on the theme, and what would happen if they weren't there? What stance do they take on the importance of the action? In Star Wars, Han Solo rejects the theme and then comes around in the end, enabling Luke to blow up the Death Star. But he's the skeptic, right? And that kind of character is very powerful in fantasy novels, because that character grants us permission to enter the reality. If it's all zealots and true believers in a fantasy or science fiction world, it's harder for us to suspend our disbelief. So Han Solo isn't just there to be cool, or he's not just there to be transportation either, you know, you really lose a lot of meaning if you cut his character out. And that's it. Well, I mean, it's not everything about story. Outlining a story can certainly be more complicated than this, but it doesn't have to be. Just write down the major beats, ask a few questions, and a whole new world will open up to you. 
Even if you never write anything of your own, outlining a story will help you enjoy and appreciate every other story more. And that's really worth something. So give it a shot. And if you do outline something and you discover something new, leave a comment. And let me know what it was. I would love to hear what you've discovered. And as always, you can help me on my own hero's journey here by hitting the subscribe button. Do 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 do